And now to speak to that point a little further, let's welcome two of the former stars of the hit TV show Suits and the hosts of the brand new podcast, Sidebar, a Suits Watch podcast, Patrick Dr- J. Adams and Sarah Rafferty. Hello. Hi, Patrick and Sarah. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having us, Sophie. Welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We're really excited to talk about your new show. Thank you. Um, We're happy to be here. Yeah, just to kind of kick things off, um, especially because this is a new show and so many of the brands on the call um, might not be familiar yet with the content. Can you tell us a little bit more about Sidebar and what made you two want to start a podcast together? Um, Any specific goals for the show or um, what made you guys want to jump into the space? God, so many things. Um, Sarah, I'll jump off, but uh, you'll have a much better sounding answer than I do. Um, <laughs> you know, Suits, uh, we're calling it a Suits Watch podcast because uh, it's a show that while we were on, I was on for seven years, Sarah was on for nine, we never actually watched. So we've listened to a lot of these rewatch podcasts where people already sort of had a familiarity with the story and the the show and the things that, you know, the, the final product of it. Um, and we, I really didn't have it and Sarah didn't really have it either. So this was an opportunity for us to, you know, on the heels of such an enormous, um, resurgence of the show a couple of summers ago or last summer, last summer, last summer. Yeah, last summer. I always see it two summers. I have two kids. So time's a flat circle. <laughs> uh, last summer, uh, on the heels of that was just like, wait a minute, this was a thing. Again, I'll speak for myself that I just sort of put in the rear view really quickly I rushed through this thing that was so pivotal to my life and to my career and like such a major experience. And because I was in such a rush and, you know, with TV, you're always in a rush. You have to like get it. You have to get your day. You have to get your week. You have to get the episode. You're on to the next episode. You're reading the next script. You know, life moves so fast. And, you know, seeing it connect with a new audience was just a reminder that like I hadn't taken any of the time to really enjoy it or process it or even understand what it is that like connects with an audience. I just kind of was moving on to the next thing always. And so Sarah and I began a sort of conversation behind the scenes of that just independently of a podcast. And then at some point in time, it was like, wait a minute, isn't this what people are doing on podcasts? Like, do we want to formalize this conversation in a way? And, you know, not only that, but bring in fans to it and, you know, include this giant global family of people who have been such supporters and uh, champions of the show, like give them a place to really gather and for us all to sort of have this experience together. So, you know, there's so many reasons to do it and we couldn't really come up with any reasons not to do it. Um, and that felt like, you know, a good sign that, that, that we should go for it. So here we are, you know, I think we had started even talking about this maybe two years ago. So two years later, um, you know, here we are finally making it happen with the help of Syria. So we're very excited. And I think I think what's amazing is in that two years time, as you said, last summer, 57.7 billion minutes of the show was watched. We were on strike at the time. It was a strange time in the world. And we were so incredibly grateful, but we couldn't really feel like how to metabolize this fun fact that it was one of the most streamed shows of all time. So coming together, sort of circling the wagons and focusing on it and finding the gratitude for it and connecting with the people who made it possible for us to do it. Not only the people behind the camera and the writers and and our castmates and all those people, but also the viewers. And now we get this chance to watch it with fresh eyes, with like totally fresh eyes. Like (laughs) maybe we haven't seen it. And we can be fans of it too and bring our curiosity bring our curiosity to it in that way i love that and i'm so glad that you guys chose sirius xm to realize this vision um i think it's going to be um obviously such a great experience for old listeners and or old fans of the show longtime fans of the show and people who just discovered it in the past couple of years um, with the recent resurgence after it was added to netflix um I'm curious, you know, we hear from so many of our listeners that audio is like a key source of nostalgia for them, whether it's like music that they grew up listening to that takes them back or podcasts that get to kind of um, bring them into a different chapter of their lives where they might have been a fan of someone or something and they get to really revisit that. Um, But I also imagine that this show will be really accessible for people who have never watched Suits because 
neither of you have, <laughs> um, technically, um, even though you lived it. Um, so I'm wondering, you know, uh, what other sort of elements about your audience can we anticipate? Do you have any predictions about who you think might be tuning in? I, um, Patrick, I think I told you this story. When we first were on the air, I was crossing the street in Toronto, and a woman stopped her car right in front of me and so that I couldn't cross. And she leans over and she says, I want to tell you that our entire family over in Rosedale is watching this together. And I like never get time to hang out with my teenage son. And now we're connecting over this thing. Mm -hmm. And my mom is watching with us, my father. So they had three generations and she was like, thank you. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, well, I, I did not create this whole thing. And what's happening now is we, when we were on the show, uh, uh, there was multiple generations and there was this huge contingency of college students watching the show and we had this opportunity to tour the colleges and do mm -hmm. these kind of live events and now we have so much time has passed but there's been this resurgence the show is new again to college students a decade later and to their parents a decade later so it's just the magic of streaming is that these things are continually new so i think that's really amazing for us and also like you know there's these things that happen with new shows now where you get these companion podcasts, right? That are so interesting. Like you watch a new show on HBO and you get this like cool companion podcast where at the end of every episode, you get to see the creators talk about scenes in the show and things that happen. And it's pretty formalized. But with an old show, you don't have that. I think anyone, and like Sarah just spoke to, we have, we, we cast such a wide net with this show, which has always been so rewarding that it's a show that like the family could really watch together we want to provide with this podcast that same sort of companion quality. So whether you've seen it before or you're watching it for the first time, you know, you get to be a part of our conversation. You get to know that, like, you know, you watch the podcast, the you watch the episode the same week we did, and then you come in and you listen to us talk about it. But also feel free to send in your notes, send in your questions. You know, let us know what your response to it was. We want it to, like, be a big, um, conversation. wide conversation that can include as many people as possible. So... Um, I think in that regard, like, that's the great thing about podcasts. It's like a new, it's just new media. It's so intimate. You could be on your hike. You could be in the car. You know, obviously we consume these things at the gym, like, you know, in the same way that a, a weekly television show is almost more intimate than a film is, you know, we're in your living room every week and you feel very close to these characters and you have a real ownership over them. Taking it into this realm and this medium is like even more so that way, you know, now every week you get to sit with us for a couple of hours and, you know, hear what our response is to this episode and hopefully join us in that, in that conversation. So I think it's just a really great way to connect with anyone who's loving the show or interested in loving the show or hating the show. If, even if you don't like it, hop in. <laughs> Hate listening is real, you know, and we'll yeah. take the, we'll take the impression. We'll take the complaint. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll hear you out. Yeah. Um, I, I agree. I think in so many ways, it's really the best of both worlds, the formula that you all have built for the show. And it's going to be something that truly anyone can enjoy. And, um, you know, what you were saying, Patrick, about how uh, accessible it is, um, is a great segue into the next question. Um, you know, we we survey our listeners often and we hear from them that um, more than half are replacing time spent watching TV with tuning into podcasts in part because of that accessibility because they can take it anywhere and I think too just because of that relationship that they get to build with the hosts um, but I'm curious to know if you have any theories uh, as to why you think people are starting to migrate more into the podcast space even sometimes at the expense of tv viewing it couldn't part of it be because we're so busy we're always kind of in motion we're on the go um, you know, I listen to my podcast when I'm working out, obviously, when I'm in the car, when I'm folding my laundry, when I'm cooking dinner. I can't sit down and watch TV at those times. Um, and that really makes me feel a sense of connection, right, to yeah, be a part cool. of somebody's conversation. Um, while I'm just doing the quotidian things, you know, I'm just going about my day and I do have to get stuff done, but I need to feel like I'm a part of something while I do it. Yeah, of course. At the end of the day, we're pack animals, right? Like we want community. <laughs> we need groups of people. We like community. We like to like have shared experience of things. 
um, and have a place to kind of show up and yeah, experience things together. And podcasting, I think, obviously has become such a, a, a massive medium. And I think that's probably part of it. It's so intimate in a way. It is with me throughout all these parts of my day. I can, you know, it's not like I can get, I'm not, I'm not, as a fan of a podcast, I'm not immediately jumping on and getting to be a part of that conversation, but I am getting to be included in an ongoing conversation that if I want to engage with and I become a deeper part of that and I start sending in voice memos to our email and I start having these questions, then I am a part of it. I'm a, I, feel, I feel a part of something rather than a TV show, which you did feel, but it's on a shorter time scale. It needs to be written. It needs to be acted. It needs to be produced. Um, which is totally an incredible value and a, and obviously an art form that moves us to want to keep doing it over and over again. But um, it's not as quick and it's not as uh, it's not as uh, instantly intimate as I think a couple of hours with your favorite hosts on a in, in these things in your ear all day. And this is going to sound sappy, so I'm going to say it. I'm going to go leave. for it. Do it. Uh, um, Do it. It's kind of like you know, book club. You can have your experience alone reading your book, and then. You need to go be in conversation in class or at your book club about it to bring the meaning. And I think that that's what we're mining for us and hopefully for our listeners and for our community. We're mining a little bit of meaning out of it because our experience in the world, when we meet people who watched it, they often share with us like what they were going through in their lives at that time that they were watching it and what it meant. And now we're going to hopefully do that more together. I love that. I think you're both so spot on. Um, I, I think, yeah, it's true. Like the the podcast just allows fans to really extend that experience of enjoying the show and um, and relate to one another and kind of trade notes in a way that um, you know is difficult to do across other media formats. So um, I think that this audience is going to be in for a real treat, um, and and I'm excited to see what kind of community is born out of the show as well. Um, okay, so shifting over to, you know, your sort of storytelling and host style, um, you're obviously both, you know, seasoned actors. Um, I'm curious, uh, how have you had to adapt your storytelling style or your voice for the audio format? <laughs> in process, Sophie, in process, <laughs> you know, we're still early in the process. We're figuring it out. We, you know, for me, it's all just constantly trying to relax, constantly like the, 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 the gentle balance between preparation and just presence, you know, like wanting to, you know, take this seriously. We want to prepare. We want to like have our notes. We want to be ready to go. But then also being really open to seeing where the conversation goes to hearing Sarah tell a story and be like, whoa, wait a minute. I want to dig into that. <laughs> um, trusting our amazing producers at Sirius to like, that was a good tangent for about five minutes. And then the other 15 <laughs> maybe is not what we need, but like not uh, editing too much in my head, not, you know, taking my hand off the wheel a little bit and like trusting that uh, the conversation is going to go in a, in a valuable place. And if it doesn't, we can change it later. So I'm still figuring it out, but um, I think it's all in a way it's the same as acting. It's all just an exercise in trying to get as relaxed as humanly possible and be as present as humanly possible and uh and just be in a really good interesting conversation with somebody who i have so much admiration and love for patrick came into this process sounding like a seasoned podcast host it was <laughs> bonkers um and it's been really fun to uh, just kind of try to hitch my wagon to that but i have been learning a lot about how my brain works in this moment in my life and there is just there are so I'm so surprised at how many memories are coming, how many questions I have, how much. There's just so much. So sometimes I'm finding I have to just be like, hang on, give me a second. Because like, it's like, um, oh, here, I'm doing it. I almost I almost <laughs> did a tangent. Not, We're giving not you an example it. right nope, here. Live I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> I was going to talk about a movie and give an example. No. Anyway, so I'm just learning a lot about how um, once my tail starts wagging, when I get excited about something, how many ideas I have. And so now uh, I'm going to learn about not editing in the moment, but just really staying focused. <laughs> but it's yeah. also great because we were worried that we'd like do this and we'd get on a mic and we'd run out of stuff to talk about, you know, like even though mm -hmm. we 
have great conversations all the time and spend way too many hours on the phone together. Like we're like, well, but what if we get in front of the mic and we don't have anything to say? And the truth is, is like we have an embarrassment of riches. I think we have no, you know, no end of things to talk about. And so it's a great place to be in, especially early in the process right now to have to be paring down like, okay, we got a lot. How do we cut it down? Where else can that story fit rather than us sort of trying to create a chemistry or like f dig for a new conversation or fill content. Like we, we have so much, and now it's about shaping, and that's been an exciting and really um, educational process in how to do that. And we have so much support from our Suits family. We have so many additional voices that have already come in and lent their support and their perspective from our showrunner and castmates and producers, and it's been really fascinating to add all of those elements to the conversation. That's awesome. Yeah, I think, you know, um, Honestly, even though, of course, you have to keep the story, like, succinct and a little bit structured, like, um, that enthusiasm and that passion that you have and the energy of you guys bouncing off each other is, in my opinion, really one of the key ingredients of what makes such a compelling podcast. I think so many listeners want to feel like they're in the room with you and, like, they're, you know, a part of your lives and sharing in this experience with you. And um, I think just based on, you know, the way you guys have described your process so far, um, that it feels like that's definitely the shape that the show is going to take. And I'm so excited to hear it for the first time. Us too. We're so excited <laughs> to share it. And, and, you know, truthfully, like, I guess we all have ego about something, but I feel pretty egoless about like, we're in such a mode of like, teach us. We want to learn from the people that's serious. We want to learn from our fans. We want to learn from everybody. Like, what are you looking for? What do we need? What do you want more of? Where are tangents too much? Do you want more tangents? We'll give you a whole episode of tangents. Like we're we're remaining very teachable in this moment, which is uh, an exciting place to be. That's awesome. Yeah, um, I love the idea of a, an all tangents bonus episode. I, I, that makes sense. <laughs> Pure <real> tangents. <laughs> um, all right. I know we're coming up on time, so just to start uh, closing out, um, I'd love to get um, a little bit more info about you both um, on a personal level, you know, there's so many brands on this call who um, I'm sure are going to be really excited to support the show. Um, are there any categories that really, um, you know, resonate with both of you in terms of things that you love to buy, things that you um, enjoy in your life and would be excited to partner with a brand around um, on the show? Get ready. What? Here we go. Do, we'll want? just we'll just fly. We'll just fly. What do I, I not buy? Ask children. my wife. What do I not buy? <laughs> um, oh, that's true. I'll that start. Uh, true. And you, Sarah, you you know me better than I know myself. I love all things tech. Uh, sort of obsessed with all things tech. I probably within my eyesight right now, I have six different sets of headphones and three phones and two iPads. Uh, I I love all things tech. I love all things camera. Um, I love all things travel. I love beds. I love my bed. I love all multiple beds, sleeping anywhere. Um, what else, Sarah? Uh, we we have children. I have teens. You have younger kids. I have teens who like to wear things, who like to decorate their rooms, <laughs> constantly reorganize their rooms. Um, we have to drive them places. Uh, the um, I'm sporty. My family's sporty. I have a very sporty family we love to travel anywhere the more remote the crazier the place um love to stay in airbnbs and stay in hotels and have really authentic experiences i'm really concerned about health um i'm a member of a sandwich generation i'm taking care of my my kids at the same time and planning for college for them and at the same time i have parents who um who are going through what they are going through. And I'm, I have a particular interest in cognitive health and brain health and those kinds mm -hmm. of things, all kinds of mm -hmm. health and wellness and fitness and ways yeah. we can track our health, you know, everything. Uh, Patrick is my, um, he's my genius bar. I've been referring to him as my genius bar because he understands everything tech and then he explains it to me and he invites me into that whole world. Um, I also love cameras, but Patrick has to show me how to use them uh, <laughs> as well as my, computer so you're right that is leave the else? full spectrum skin skin mm -hmm. you love yeah. skin you're big I on skin i love to wear my spf 
so important. Can't skip a day. Um, that's great. No, you're right. That is the full spectrum of, uh, of advertising. I think so many brands would um, be so lucky to be a part of the show and, um, and find so much relevance uh, working with you both and um, reaching your audience, which, as we talked about, is, I think, really going to encompass such a wide range of people from, you know, members of Gen Z who might have discovered the show in the past year to people co-listening with their families and beyond. So um, I'm just so excited to see what the show is going to become. And I really appreciate you both taking the time to join us today and give us a little more background on what it's about and what we can expect. So thank you so both so much for being here. Anytime, thank Sophie. You. Thank you. Thanks for your support. We're so excited.